Welcome to the Cisco ASA Fundamentals Series. My name is Ahmed Mukhtar and today is lecture number three. Cisco ASA Security Zones Part 2. So in the first part, we basically looked at the theory behind security zones and today we're going to perform the lab on GNS3. So here's the checklist before we move on to the lab and you've done all the four points. The first four points have been done. The only point that is remaining is the ASA lab. We will be looking at the name interface commands and the security levels. Basically, the security zone is a logical term. The Cisco ASA implements those zones using security levels as I depicted and illustrated in, in the last lecture. So you can refer to that lecture if you need to. So let's head on towards the lab and see what we got. Moving on to our first lab of the series, we've got four routers in this topology and got one firewall. Our one, two, three, and four are connected towards the firewall in their respective zones and assign their, their specific IP addresses. Uh, as you can see, we've got three zones. One is the inside zone, one is the outside, and the DMZ. Okay, first things first, what are we going to do in this lab? Firstly, we're going to be configuring all the routers. The routers will be configured. And the next thing, we will configure Telnet on all of these routers so that we have TCP reachability from R1 to R3, R1 to R4, R1 to R2, and respectively. For example, we're going to make R4 the Telnet server so that we can Telnet from the outside and see the effects of the DMZ zone and the security levels. And then we'll be going through the ASA part together. One thing I have done with the ASA is I have configured a management interface. A management interface has been configured with Telnet access towards the firewall. So don't worry about that. We will be discussing the Telnet part and the management part in our later lectures. For the time being, I needed access towards firewall and all the routers. So that is why I configured this management interface. No worries, okay? No worries at all. You will assume that you are you have just consoled into the firewall and you're just configuring it from scratch. So let's begin with configuring the routers. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that rock music and now let's look into the ASA firewall. So first up, what are you going to see in an ASA firewall? That is a question. You open up a box of Cisco ASA firewall and you see this prompt after booting. You see this prompt and you obviously hit enable right away and you see a Cisco uh, a password prompt and engineers go like, okay, I got to hit Cisco. That would be the password, right? Or Cisco ASA. That is the host name. That doesn't work. Nothing works. Okay, so what to do then? Well, you gotta hit just enter. So that is a default mechanism that the Cisco Firewall has. That is there because maybe you have forgotten to type in the enabled password. Most probably if you have configured the device and you haven't set up passwords, anybody can plug into a console cable. And that is basically to fool the hacker or anyone that is trying to access the firewall. So let's 
go to global configuration mode the CLI is just look and feel of the CLI is same as an iOS router or switch but boy it is different okay first of all let's set up the host name got the host name set up let's set up our zones accordingly now we have gone through all the theory so it's gonna be a labbing scenario now gigs your says zero firstly we're, what are we gonna do is we're gonna configure this outside zone let's give it an IP address like we do on routers 192.168.1.1 255.255.255.0 no shut it okay so now I should be able to ping when I do 168.1.2 right this guy right let's try that oh what it says is no route to host what do you mean it should what whenever you configure an IP address on an interface it goes through the routing table right of the router for example look at this I got this uh, IP configured so show IP route doing that I have this route in my routing table as shown as connected but not so much with a firewall you don't see that route in the firewall you see the management interface that I have configured talent over as I already told you but it's not coming up now there are three basic steps when you're configuring an, an interface firstly you need to define the IP address secondly you need to define the name of the interface and third you gotta no shut it the name concept just grabs the concept of the name that the name is kind of like a description that you can use in ACL statements, NAT statements, static routing, etc. That's what you need to know right now. So let's give it a name. The name we have defined for it is outside, outside. So by default, the Cisco ASA iOS determines the outside interface as an interface that is untrusted and sets that security level to zero and truth be told it does that for every other interface except one that is the inside interface okay so security level is set to zero that's what we needed let's move on towards our next interface that is gigs u slash uh, two okay your first off let me just show you the route show route it has it come up inside has come up so that is good let us just ping the router 2 let's see if it can ping r2 and sure enough it can so we're in gigs 0 slash 2 let's configure the DMZ so the IP address is 172.16.1.1 24 the name of the interface is DMZ by default it's gonna assign it a security level of zero so it is the untrusted interface again but we want to change that we want to make it 50 so how do we do that security level command does that security level 50 and it sets the security level to 50 have you no shut the interface no we haven't let's no shut it and do show route let's see oh sorry no do show routes in an AC firewall we got this interface in our routing table let's just do a, some basic ping oh sorry let's just do some basic pings 172.16.1.3 and 2 sweet so we got the last interface gig 0 slash 1 give it an IP address 10.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 255.255.255.0 .255 .255 .255 Give it a name interface of inside. Now, wh whether you give the name in caps or not in caps, it's gonna give it a security level of 100 by default. And that is the only level that the ASA assigns by itself. So that is good. Now, let's no, shut that interface first. And now how do I see the security levels? I can't see that by the interface IP brief command. I can't see that. I can see only the interfaces layer one and two statuses and the IP address. I can see that, but what is the security level? So that is done by the show name if command. What it shows you is all the levels of security, the name you have configured, and the respective interface of the ASF firewall. Okay, so now we have configured the ASA security zones and their interfaces. 
one thing I want to emphasize here that when you're configuring a security zone on an interface, this guy doesn't know anything about it. It's just like a VLAN on an access port. So you get the concept, right? This router doesn't know that it's an inside zone. It's just a locally significant thing on the ASA firewall. So what are we gonna learn from this lab now? Well, we had the theory in lecture number two, let's implement it. And the theory was anyone from a trusted zone can go towards a trusted, uh, untrusted zone, right? So inside you, uh, R1 can tell it and should tell it to R3 or R4 or even to R2. Similarly, R3 and R4 can tell it to R2 but cannot tell it to R1. And R2 cannot tell it to any of them unless and until I allow them, specifically using an access list on this specific outside interface. Let's check that out. Okay, so we've got R1. Let's test it out. Let's tell that towards 172.16.1.3. That is this uh, R3 over here. This password, there's a password about Cisco Cisco and we're on R3. Sweet. Let's try to tell that R, not R4, obviously we can't do that. Let's check 192.168.1.2. Let's check R2. Cisco, Cisco, yeah, pretty much. Great. Now let's hop on to R3 and try to tell it R2 again. Can we do that? 1.2. Sure we can because we're going from the DMZ towards the outside zone. And let's try to tell it from sitting on R3 to R1. That isn't gonna work specifically because we're jumping from a DMZ zone towards the inside zone and the DMZ zone has a security level of 50 and the inside zone has a security level of 100 so that isn't gonna work similarly for R2 R2 cannot tell net to any of these unless and until I, I allow it so what if I want R2 to tell net R4 what's up with that so let's go ahead and first of all check if it can tell net to 172.16.1.2 it cannot do that. It cannot tell it to anyone. So let's just go ahead and configure the firewall with some basic ACLs. Uh, it'll be access list. I'm jumping a little ahead of myself just to show you that permit. I'll say, I'll say TCP, oh sorry, TCP coming from any going towards 172.16.1.2 equal to telnet sorry sorry I gotta say host or I could just use the wildcard mask equal to telnet okay access group allow don't worry about this ACL syntax and all we'll be covering that in a separate lecture so don't worry about it, okay? Interface outside. So I basically allowed R2 to tell it in to R2, uh, um, sorry, to R4. R4 has some issues. Let me just check them out real quick. Section line. And have a, uh, I, I didn't configure it. Uh, maybe I didn't. So line with y zero to four login login local privilege level fifteen. So your name is Cisco and privilege is fifteen. Sorry, privilege fifteen password Cisco and I think we're done. This happens when telnet is not configured, by the way. So I got the telnet configured. And we're in R2. Oh, sorry, R4. Now, if you if you remember the scenario from lecture two, if any attacker has a CLI access of any server, for example, here, this the attacker somehow got the CLI access of R4. Now, if attacker wants to tell it to R4, R3, that is 172.16.1.3. 
it can do that without passing through the firewall. Sorry, we got a even passer wrong. No, oh, man. Oh, Cisco. Oh, God, Cisco, Cisco. Got it. You're in R3, but you cannot tell it to R1 because for that I gotta allow it. Let me try that. Two. It cannot tell it to R1. Let's try the same thing on R1. R1, if R1 initiates the connection, it can. But if R4 initiates the connection from an untrusted zone going towards a trusted zone, it cannot complete the session. So sitting on R1, let's see what happens. Sorry, not 172.16.1.2. And bingo. We're inside the router 4. Okay, so you get it, right? Let me just explain to you and let's finalize this video. Okay, so uh, I hope you got the concept and the concept was any connection initiated from an untrusted zone going towards a trusted zone is not allowed by default and you have to allow it via an ACL. But any connection initiated from a trusted zone like this zone going towards an untrusted zone is allowed by default. So that is the basic concept. So I hope you have gotten this. Let's just go through the checklist and review it and let's finish this off. Okay, I know it's hard to go through the theory. We just want practical, right? But truth is in, in the networking field, I have seen that the theory is the most important part. If you don't understand the theory and the logic, you can't do the labs. You can't understand the labs even if you are putting in commands all day. If you don't know what that command is doing, you don't know anything, you know. If you're troubleshooting something, you should know the theory and logic behind the command. So let's go through the review. Methods for accessing Cisco firewalls. You looked into that, ASDM, CLI methods of Telnet and uh, console cable. And then we looked at accessing modules of context security and SFR. Uh, by PRSM if, if you want to access um, contact security that is PRSM if you want to access SFR modules there is FMC FTD is built into FTD firewalls sorry FDM is built into FTD firewalls and then we looked at the concept of security zones why they are in place for security obviously and then we looked at the DMZ and the ASA security levels we looked at the DMZ if if the DMZ gets compromised they cannot traverse towards your inside zone unless and until you allow them via an ACL we saw that in the lab lastly we had the lab and uh, the name if concept and the security level concepts were explained and configured thank you for watching do subscribe to my channel, share this video, and stay tuned for more. Thank you so much.